Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second night of our Livestock County Fair Management Clinic. I'm Lexi Hayes, and I'm the Youth Livestock Coordinator here in the Department of Animal Sciences and Industry at K-State. And joining me tonight to help with the program are Dr. Joel Darushi, and he is a Swine Extension Specialist and the State Leader for Extension for the Department of Animal Sciences, and he helps out with a lot of the Youth Livestock Programming efforts that we have. We also have Kelsey Nordyke, who is with Kansas 4-H, and she is the Ag Sciences Specialist. So the Ag Science related projects, including animal sciences, are some of her responsibilities. We're excited to have you guys joining us. We had a great discussion last night over our topics, and we look forward to a really good program tonight as well. Just to provide a little background on this program, it's hosted every other year, so in the even years, and it's been hosted since 2008. It came out of a committee where a group of agents were looking for a way to get together with other fair board members and discuss some options for the county fair. We know that everyone has a county fair, but all of them are unique and something different works better for all the different counties. And so they are looking for a forum in order to engage in that conversation. And so it started as a program uh, that was actually held during the day at two different locations across the state. And both agents and fair board members would come together and there would be a couple that would share about what they were doing in the county. And from there, it was just question and answer and other people chipping in on what they did in their local area. So this program really is discussion-based. There's for most uh, topics, there's no exact one right way that it has to be done in a county in order to get it accomplished for what's best for the youth in that county that are involved in livestock and the clientele for that county as well. And so that's why the discussion part is, has been imperative for this program. So we encourage everyone to get involved. If you have questions as we go along, especially through these uh, main sessions where we're all in one room, go ahead and share those in the chat and we will make sure and get those asked. And then also um, at the end, we might have you just unmute and ask your question. We are recording all of the sessions tonight, including the ones that are hosted in the breakout rooms. And so you will be able to go back and see those if you didn't have a chance to join us last night and were curious about those topics, we'll be sharing a link to where those videos are posted and you can go back and review them later. We'll also be distributing some other resources as well. It's been really popular that people want to look at other people's fair books to see how they format them, if they get them printed or just offer them online and what that looks like. And so we have started building a resource folder that has various fair books in it, as well as other information like bylaws or MOUs. And so if you have any of those that you didn't share in the registration link and you would like to contribute to that folder, go ahead and just email them to me and I'd be more than happy to include those. And again, we'll share those when we share the link to the video. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get started with the program. We have a full evening planned. And our first topic is one that kind of developed out of the 2020 clinic. Uh, it came up as a discussion point. Andrea actually just posed a question and offered a suggestion of something they did in that county. And that kind of changed the direction of the conversation. And lots of people had questions for her on what they were doing in their county. And that's developing an emergency management plan. And part of that is the great partnerships in Ford County that they've developed with the different entities across the county. And so not only is it about the emergency plan, but also about those partnerships and how everyone can help each other out uh, with their own unique talents and expertise that they bring to the table. So I have Andrea Burns, who is the extension agent in Ford County, as well as Rex Beamer and Jake Ring, who are also in Ford County. And so with that, I'm gonna turn the floor over to them and let them share about their emergency plan. Thank you, Lexi. I'm really glad that uh, our emergency manager, Rex Beamer, and our fair association president, Jake Ring, were able to join us tonight. I hope you guys aren't blowing away like we are here in uh, Dodd City today. We've had pretty significant wind gusts, so that kept, kept Rex here in the county today, and we're glad that he's able to join us tonight. If you'll give me a second, I'll get our screen shared and get us rolling here.
Okay, kind of the first thing that we kind of talked about, um, I approached the Ford County Fair Association about the need for an emergency operations plan and uh, I had to do it more than one time to get them to bite on it. And then I got Rex involved and he helped put the plan together and we got buy-in by the entire fair board. And that was what got us going, hit the ground running. And it was really great to be able to um, come together, work together with emergency management and put the plan together. We've had to utilize parts of it already. I'm glad that we have it. During COVID, it made things a lot easier when we had to decide what we were gonna do with our fair. Emergency management stepped up and helped us with those things. Um, all of our masks, all of our hand sanitizer, all of those things were provided to the Ford County Fair Association by emergency management, um, severe weather, all I have to do is call Rex and I know kind of where we're at weather-wise. National Weather Service works with us to keep, to keep us abreast of what's going on and what's happening. Um, it's really nice to have that kind of working relationship. relationship. I know as an agent, then I can focus on the, the next activity or the next show or whatever's at hand. And they're worrying about those things on the side and we um, don't have to worry about having a disaster or a train wreck. So I'm gonna let um, Jake and Rex talk a little bit about things and we're gonna just kind of uh, play off each other and go from there. Uh, and Andrea, okay. we can't see your slides. So if you thought you had shared them, go ahead and hit that share yeah, button great. and we'll be able to see them. Okay, sorry. That's okay. I'm uh, Jake Ring with uh, the Ford County Fair Board President out here in Ford County. Uh, if, if you're like, we were we've we discussed doing a emergency management plan for years and years and years and never uh really took that extra step to go ahead and, and get it taken care of and get it done and uh rex moved in uh as our emergency manager and with his uh relationship with andrea and stuff he he was uh instrumental in getting us to go ahead and finalize an emergency management plan we all we all have our own way to do it and for years you know if something would happen uh, you just took care of things, but having a, a, an organized plan and uh, having something set in place and contacts uh, that you usually don't respond to or, or know about prior as has helped out a bunch. And so we finally, with the right encouragement and the right people, uh, got, got a good plan going with Rex and Andrea. And so uh, it's helped us out a bunch and uh, been instrumental with, the, with, I think a lot of other counties have asked to share, us to share our stuff and, and what Rex has done. So uh, it's come a long ways from what we've, we've been at and where, where I started out here without anything, you know, we'll just do this, we'll do that, but not really having a plan. So it really helps out. Now, can you see my slides, Lexi? Yes, you're good, Andrea. Okay, Rex, you just tell me when to advance and I'll advance it much easier. Yep. They'll, they'll be able to hear you through that. You go ahead. Yep. You want me gonna, to pull them? Okay. I think I can read that, I hope. <laughs> okay. Uh, technical difficulties, always something. Uh oh. Sorry about the delay. Okay, Andrea, if you hover over the bottom of the slide, um, there should be, there should show up arrows on the screen where you're sharing from, but you can advance that way. It's not going to be <laughs> We can talk fast. 
Andrew, it's usually in the bottom left hand corner, clear in the bottom left. And it doesn't show up very dark. I have slide two of 19, but when I click on it, it doesn't do anything. That's my problem. Thank you, Sandra. Yep. Maybe pull it out of presentation mode. Get it to where you're, it's on your screen. <laughs> Do it again. Okay, now try to go forward. Oh, no, it's not here. Yeah, but it's not a, this is what we're doing. This is the show. So go to share on the presentation again. Yeah. I can't see my arrow. Maybe we should just go over it. Yeah, you do it. Yeah, if you want, you can just talk through it and we can share your slides later. Sorry, I thought I had it That's set okay. to do this, so. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, if you just want to talk through them, we can send out your slide set um, later if you'd like to do that. For us, yeah, if it'll change. Gonna do it on my computer, but not on the screen. Just a, go ahead, Rex, and kind of. Uh... Okay, say on the first slides that we have here, I went through and put some incidents that have happened in past fairs, different locations around the United States. Um, one of them was a barn, cattle barn that had burned. The Next one is flood, where they're evacuating animals out of the flood water. Another barn that burned. Medical emergency on site. How is your dad deal with that? The collapse of a building. That was Iowa State Fair. I have a picture of that. I have one um, with the pig disease control with that one. Chicken, what are you gonna do with the chickens and that? And that's a real problem. Um, something that we've had to deal with in Ford County before is that we had a positive um, polarium test because we tested the day of our fair. And so then we had to take that bird out of the barn, put it somewhere so we could retest it and disinfect the whole barn. And that completely changed how we do our poultry check-in because of that one incident that uh, we didn't want to go through that again. And then a loose animal, how are you going to deal with a loose animal? So are you able to handle all these incidents without a plan? Does everybody know what to do? And is it the same for everyone? Okay. So how do you plan? 
What do you plan for? Who's involved in the planning process? Why do we need plans? And are there legal issues without plans? So with those, there's a lot of questions there that everybody needs to ask themselves, what's going on? So, but how do you start that planning? Where do you start at? Just sit down and start talking, figure out if those are items that you need to do, which I venture to say that 90% of you have kind of thought through some of these processes before, but just never put down things on paper like Jake had said and everything. And then you want everybody involved. The more people you can have involved in planning the doing the planning process, the easier it's going to make it because you've got several different people looking at it from several different angles. And so now you're able to get more into the plan than if you just had one certain person sit down and try to read the plan. So with that, do you want a subject matter expert? writing the plan or do you want somebody that knows everything or thinks they know everything to write that plan so in emergency management we write plans all the time and we pull the different groups together and discuss what we need to put into that plan but there's things that i think i'm pretty rounded in my knowledge of things but i don't know everyday procedures for everybody i don't know what everybody does how they do it so having those experts come in and start planning that to help them plan that process we're able to get it down on paper okay um the the other thing that's important is after you work as hard as you do to put the plan together uh, don't just put it on in a notebook and put it on a shelf somewhere so it collects dirt or dust um, we are in, in the process of getting ready to review our plan this year um, so we can upgrade some, update some things. Um, we've got um, new contact information that we need to put in, a few changes that we need to be made um, so that we need, we need to update that plan and that document um, all the time. And it's kind of a revolving door. It, it keeps changing every year. Um, we learn some things from a previous fair. We incorporate them into the, into the plan. And I think at our fair board meetings now, uh, I know most fair board meetings are longer than uh, you want them to be sometimes, but we're going to take a little small, small portion of our meetings and go over a portion of our, just a little portion of the emergency plan so everybody can understand what it is. Even though if you've read, read through it once, there's things that, you know, uh, you're not going to remember. So we're going to take excerpts out of that for, you know, 10 minutes out of a meeting, maybe 15 and just go over our emergency plan at different parts at every meeting that we have so people are on the same way uh, page to be able to respond and, and know what's all in that emergency plan we have radios we're very fortunate in ford county we have radios that we use um, to to uh, talk to each other to jake has to wear one all the time it's mandatory for the fair, fair board president to have a radio we have one in our fair office and um, we give ones to superintendents we use them for shows so if there, somebody's back in the barn and we're looking for somebody we don't have to walk all the way back there we can just radio and the radios are also um, very effective in being part of our plan because it increases our communication you're not constantly looking for someone jake is just a radio call away which i'm i know during fair season he hates but it it makes it so much easier when things come up or we have situations that we need to deal with it's easy to get a hold of everybody and to get everybody where we need to go what we have five radios mm -hmm. five radios so we can spread them out um, that works really good and um, is a lot easier than cell phone operation and uh, in an emer a true emergency we wouldn't want to rely on our cell phones anyway so that's another um, aspect of our of our plan that we had the radios first but we were able to incorporate them in um, we work with Rex on that so we can all be on the same radio wave to be able to communicate as well. Um, some things that have happened in Ford County um, before we had the plan in place, like I said, we had the um, disease scare in our poultry barn. 
um, where we were letting poultry come in and we had somebody bring a bird in and then we tested it after it had been in the in the barn and it tested positive. And so we had to pull it back out and disinfect everything. Don't wanna do that again. Um, it's hot in July. It's even worse when you're wearing PPE to disinfect a barn. Um, so we have things in place now where that won't happen. Um, we've had animal activists come to our fair. Um, like Rex pointed out, animal activists never show up at fairs without a camera or a video camera. And so we kind of know how to spot them now. We have a plan in place to how to deal with them um, so that we're not making front page news um, and so that we have a way to um, make sure that we're keeping everybody safe and keeping a good positive image for extension for Ford County and for the 4-H program. I'll let Rex talk about severe weather because he pretty well, he knows how to get a hold of me for severe weather things, but um, it's really nice to not have to worry about making those judgment calls. Um, on whether we're going to have an activity or not, because it's written in our plan. And so it's very clear as to what we're going to do. And Rex helps us uh, make those, get that information and make those calls for large events. I'll let you talk about that some more. So emergency management, we're tied in with the National Weather Service real tight. And so we daily have conference calls with them when the weather's supposed to be getting bad. And then we set and monitor in the emergency operations center the weather that's going on at that time. I have the luxury of having some retired meteorologists that come in and set into the EOC. And with their training, their lab, they're able to kind of foresee what's getting ready to happen and start telling us when we need to start telling people, you know, you need to evacuate the area, you need to start locking things down because of high winds, or you need to start sending people to shelters, tornado shelters, because it looks like the possibility of a tornado is getting pretty close. So go ahead and have those people head out early. So that way we don't have traffic jams, things of that nature. But in the process of that, if you don't let your emergency manager know or your first responders know, do they know where the camps are at? I know that a lot of fairs have camps set up for the um, 4-H people to stay close to the animals and watch the animals. So how are you notifying them? How are you talking to them? First responders, how are you talking to the first responders if they happen to come in? Do they know how many people were on scene or on site? Things of that nature. So there's a lot of things that go on. The big thing is just having that right contact person. I talked to Andrea, she knows who she needs to contact to get the word spread around. So just having that one point of contact in that call list makes it real nice and easy for us. If, uh, and talking about shelters and stuff, we really haven't had a, a, a big event to have to uh, evacuate the whole facility, but we do have places uh, around town, but our fairgrounds does not really have a, a tornado shelter. Uh, so we try to, pre-plan to that and show people where they need to go if something happens. Uh, if we do need to evacuate and such, uh, because we don't have complete facilities, if there's a lot of crowd here, we try to stay on top of it. And if we uh, have to can't, you know, send people home, it's gonna be earlier than what the, the bottom line comes down to it. Uh, so the pre-planning on that stuff, if you're not set up for a regular shelter of some, some type, you need to have that in your plan to know where you're gonna send people the closest facilities that, that the, your town or city has to, to house people in an emergency situation. My suggestion is have a pamphlet made up of where your shelter locations are at and be able to post them on the doors and nothing else when people are doing their check-in, go ahead and hand them a copy of it. That way they know where it's at. Go through the, um, with them during orientation and stuff. Where are the shelters at? Where they need to check in at, at the shelter, things of that nature. That's one thing that we're doing in our county and all is putting a pamphlet together. Andrea's gonna laminate it, and put it on the doors and stuff. 
And then on the back side of it, we got QR codes. And with that QR code, you're able to take and scan it with your phone and it goes to Google Maps and that way, you know exactly where you're going, where the shelters are at, things of that nature for all the other spectators that are coming in that may be from out of town and not know where things are at in town. Talk briefly about medical emergencies. We all hope that we never have to dial 911 for a medical emergency at our county fairs, but I know most of us have had to do that at some point. Um, working with your emergency manager and your EMS um, coordinators so that when you have a horse show and you have somebody get bucked off of a horse or have a, have a um, all those train wrecks that we all um, worry about, they come in, they don't run sirens because they know they're coming to the Ford County Fair. Once they hit the fairgrounds, they don't run sirens because then we'll have more issues. Um, it's scaring animals, that kind of thing. We have somebody at the gate that's able to direct them to where the situation is. Um, and that's very helpful um, to have those plans in place. Um, we also never had to need it, but there are plans in place um, in our plan for fires and what we would do for situations like that. So, you know, the accountability aspect is the biggest thing with that. Where's the rally point? Where are you going to have everybody go? Make sure everybody's out of the buildings and everything. That accountability needs to be done on a regular basis during events because we want we don't want to leave anybody behind. So. Do you want emergency management involved? I would suggest that if your emergency manager is not involved with you, get them involved and see what emergency management can do for you. Some agencies might have a strong emergency management um, agency in their county. Some are um, part-time. So it varies from county to county on how that's going to be able to help out with you. Um, we like to get involved. We um, bring a trailer in to the fairgrounds. It's got a nice air conditioner in it. So I get to sit in an air conditioned trailer all day, but we use that for rehab. So if we have somebody that's starting to show some signs of heat stress, anything like that, we bring them into the trailer and cool them down, make sure they're okay. While they're in the trailer, we have a lot of preparedness material that we like to share with everybody. So we invite everybody that wants to come into our trailer. And as emergency managers, we're always wanting to educate the public on preparedness. Preparedness, the more we prepare people, the easier it's gonna be, the less 911 calls we're gonna receive during that incident. So, and again, we work with the National Weather Service real close. So if things do start unfolding, we're right there with the Weather Service, being able to keep you guys in contact with everybody else to know what's actually taking place. And lastly, at fairs, there's always good food. So emergency management, we like to eat good food. So we're going to eat, be there to eat your food. Yes. Our fairgrounds is not air conditioned. So to have a cooling trailer available, especially when it's 110, 115, and a place for people to go if they overheat um, has has been a lifesaver really. It's solved a lot of problems that we've had in the past. They won't let me stay in it very long. They kick me out when I try to go in and hide there. So um, they, they do um, do a lot of nice things. One year we were able to track all the volunteer hours of our fair board members because we um, worked with emergency manage, management to do a um, kind of a mini drill and so they, fair board members had to log in every day when they came and they had to log out when they left and it, it gave your, your staff good exercise yeah. in keeping track of volunteers. Um, they use T cards to keep track of some of the things. We use technology to keep track of people and where they were at, whether they were still on the fairgrounds or not. Um, I think it really opened their eyes to how many hours of a day they really spend down here during county fair. Um, so that was, that was nice to have. Like I said, during COVID, I made a call to Rex and said, I'm going to need masks, gloves, hand sanitizer. hand sanitizer. He was able to set me up right away with everything that I needed. Um, 
so that's been a that's been a good good thing to have we have a, an event during our county fair um it's called hometown heroes and rex has helped us get life save helicopter to land at our fairgrounds during the fair um so that the kids then can see the helicopter they bring down fire trucks there's sheriff's officers cars they can see all that we kind of turned it into an educational fun um, kind of like a touch a truck event and that's gone over really well um, we provide other organizations the opportunity to come in and provide information and educational materials to the public and work with them on that we've had really good turnout with that it's a really good event of course we also offer food that tends to bring people down but um, the year we landed the helicopter I think we had more people down here than we had had in a long time but some of them just came to see why the helicopter landed at the fairgrounds um, but it was nice that they at least noticed that there was something going on down here so uh, that's kind of something that we've dealt with too and, and tried to make it more of an educational event and to not be not be afraid of the fire truck or the police officer or the sheriff's officer when when they're around and so we've turned it into an educational event as well I think that's all the slides that you guys can't see so uh we'll open it up to questions if um you guys want things i'll make sure that lexi has a copy of our emergency plan so that she can put it in the folder for everybody to print off if they want um it's kind of lengthy but um i think it answers a lot of questions and puts into a lot of scenarios things that we hadn't talked thought about before and i'm hoping that if we plan for them We'll never have to use it. Right, that's the whole plan. I see there was a question on uh, from Sandra. How do you purchase the radios with the Fair Board Extension Board or what? Uh, the Fair Board has purchased the the radios for us. Uh, at first, we had some donated that ended up not working as well. Some leftover ones that they were switching out. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to go ahead and just purchase our own as a fair board. And that way we got a little bit better quality uh, of a radio that will encompass a little bit more areas. I have to, like Andrea said, I, I have one on most of the time I'm down here. If I, it'll go four or five miles down the road. If I keep it with me, then people can still holler at me. So I got to remember to leave it on the on site so I don't get called all the time. <laughs> there any other questions? Well, thank you guys for presenting and sharing your expertise and information on how you've partnered together. I just might ask, um, Maybe what is something that you had to build in the plan uh, for that COVID year when you talked about it being really helpful and emergency management was ready to hop in and help wherever they can, that you plan to carry forward as we come out of the pandemic that you didn't expect to use, but once you built it in the plan and needed to use it, how you're gonna use it in the future? I think the way we do our weigh-ins, um, is different and we had to do that because of COVID, not bringing in everybody at once and kind of staggering them. I think the families like that. That was something that we learned during COVID that we'll keep. Um, we made some changes in our schedule as far as when open class ch checked in or when drop exhibits were dropped off. Um, I think we're gonna change that. We're gonna tweak it, continue to tweak it some more, but that's something that uh, worked really, really well. Um, we don't want to practice it again quite like we did before, but uh, it worked really, really well. The family seemed to like it. It took away the um, rush. Everybody felt the first day. Um, we print, we print um, our, our uh, entry cards on demand. We have purchased uh, printers. And so when you do your check-in, if you entered 100 photos, but you only brought 30, we print those 30 entry cards. We don't have to print all of them. And so um, we've cut down on our waste and our extra cards and some of that confusion. Um, it's made our families more accountable because they have to get those um, entries in on time. Um, I think that's been helpful. 
Yeah, I think the biggest thing is uh, the whole COVID, you know, made everybody think outside of the box and everybody changed. I mean, like yesterday was talked about, everybody did a little bit different. Uh, it just made you think outside of the box to try to put on the best showcase you could or fair for your community and for the kids that were involved. So those little things that we took for granted, the check-ins and things like that, when you have to spread people out, it made you adjust your schedules and uh, made us do a lot of things and it, it made it easier and things that you just don't anticipate and didn't think about to begin with because you always did it before and so it helped us out to see where we were having issues and then you know keeping people away separated and it's just made everything else flow better at the fair. Wonderful thank you for sharing that. Are there any other questions? I haven't seen any pop up in the chat. So I might pose the question and you can either raise your hand um, virtually or you can even put it in the chat. How many of you already have an emergency plan or after Andrea's comments in 2020, you at least maybe went back to your fair board and started creating an emergency plan just so we have an idea how many of you are already working towards this? If you, you if you've used my name in vain because of that, it's okay. It'll save you in the long run, I promise. And like I reiterate again, I mean, we were behind and we didn't have one and all of a sudden you know, we've discussed it year after year after year. Andrea was like, do we have this done? Do we have somebody to do it? And it, she took a long time for us to, to finally get together along with Rex uh, coming on board. And, and it helped us out a lot as a fair board uh, to finally finalize it all because we, we just kept putting, putting, putting it on the back burner because it was a daunting task for some of us. <laughs> in the least that's not used to it. Well, the one thing to look at too is if you have a plan in place and you have an incident and something bad happens and it ends up going to litigation, it's going to be a lot better on you because you did have a plan and followed it versus not having a plan at all. So that was one of my big selling points to be able to get it going right off the bat. And I would say buy-in um buy-in of everybody was important um like they like jake said i'd been trying for years to get them to to agree to put together a plan and they kind of we always had more pressing issues that needed to be discussed and when they finally did agree and uh rex brought us the basically the first draft and we we read through it um i watched a bunch of light bulbs come on because everybody realized this wasn't so bad this was a good idea and they've all bought into it and have supported it and that's been really important too as an agent um, having them buy into that plan and realize why we do it do we post the plan on site during the fair uh, parts of it we do we do have some of it out there and i've just you know we're trying to evolve ourselves and get things more uh more efficient and so hopefully in the future we can have it a little bit more online and then we'll have copies of it also and it's a lot to read and, and that's what I was saying earlier you know we we've probably all read through it once or twice and we still don't I mean know what's happening all the time so if you if you do implement something you should go through it at least portions of it more often than just once a year you know it needs to be reviewed every year for sure but also to keep it fresh in people's mind because some of us don't deal in that kind of stuff. I know some people, some fair boards have uh, firemen on their fair boards and other and uh, police officers and other people that are active in the community. And, and we don't have that on our board. So uh, it's just, it's just better that we start being proactive instead of reactive. And, and that's what we're trying to implement now. I mean, we're still a little bit behind the eight ball, but we're trying to catch back up. The other thing to add on to that is you don't want to put everything um, out to the public on what's in that plan. There's a lot of names, phone numbers, things of that nature for emergency contacts. And 
you don't want all that contact list being spread out throughout the community around the state, things of that nature. We also have a heat contingency plan. Um, it's part of our emergency management plan. And we decide the week prior to the fair, if it looks like the temperatures are gonna be high enough that we need to put our heat contingency plan in place, we will post it um, around the, the fairgrounds that we're following that plan. It'll be on our Facebook page. It'll be on the fair, fair board's Facebook page. And that way the families know, you know that there's a heat contingency plan and we're gonna follow it. So that part of it is actually even included in our fair book, but it's also included in our emergency plan. Okay, well, wonderful. Well, thanks again to Andrea Rex and Jake for sharing about Ford County. And Ooh. like she mentioned, she's gonna send us uh, their PowerPoint and the example plan and we will uh, send it out when we send out the resource material. So thanks guys for sharing.